What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about ammo. Just so we can help everybody understand what all is involved with ammunition. Welcome back everybody. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about ammo. I've got several different calibers laid out here just so we can give everybody a understanding of calibers and hollow points and jagged hollow points and lead round nose and full metal jacket and semi wad cutters and this and that and these and those and lions and tigers and bears, oh my, all right? This stuff isn't complicated. I just want to give some of the newer shooters out there, newer people to firearms, a little better understanding of ammunition and some of the misconceptions that are out there. Um, as you can see, again, I've got several different calibers. We've got some rifle calibers here. Uh, a lot of these are pistol calibers, and then we have some actual bullets to kind of discuss that. So when it comes time to pick out really caliber, when you're looking at caliber, uh, you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna tell you, oh, 45 is the best caliber to have, and 40 caliber is the best caliber to have. Okay, now there's a, the FBI had a big ballistic study done years ago, uh, and I think what they determined is nine millimeter was the better caliber to have. Uh, you're more than welcome to go and Look that up, read it. It's a very interesting article. Uh, I don't know if I've still got it saved. If I do, I'll put the link down in the description. But they did a very good job of going through using the ballistics gel and everything. And 9mm was what they found. Outside of that, it's personal preference. Okay, uh, you've got everything from a 22. So you've got your little 22. Uh, all the way up to your 45, which is probably pistol-wise about the largest caliber you're probably going to carry in a pistol revolvers. Uh, you can get a little bit bigger, 357, uh, 454 Casul. Um, so there's plenty of options out there. Uh, I, again, I'm not going to get into... Uh, revolvers, pistols, that stuff just kind of tell you as far as size and things like that depending on what type of firearm you're looking at getting. Me, I like semi-automatics. Um, I do have some revolvers. I know how to use them. Still something to understand how to use, but you get what you want as far as pistol or revolver. Just want you to understand about ammunition. Now, the other thing when you're looking at caliber and stuff Yes, 22s are great because there's hardly no recoil to them, but not something I necessarily want for self-defense. Okay, this is just me, and I'm just kind of telling you my thoughts around it so you can kind of understand some of my thought process. 22 can be a little unreliable just because they're so affordable, they're so mass-produced. I'm not saying they don't get quality checked, but some just make it through so you will run into a lot of misfires and we're going to talk about that stuff here shortly but you pick what you want carry what you want just giving you the thoughts around it next you're going to have your 380 I think it's a good caliber I think it would get the job done um, especially if you're not wanting something big but I'll be honest to me just because of the size of a 380 firearm or a 380 handgun, it to me it has about the same recoil as a 9mm. So that's the next step after the 380, you got 9mm, um, then you have your 40 caliber and then your 45. Now yes, there are other calibers in between those, 
you've got 10 millimeter, you got 357 SIG. All right, you just, to me, I think you're just kind of getting personal preference. Uh, mostly what I carry is gonna be nine millimeter. Most of my pistols are in nine millimeter. Of course, I've got a 1911. If you're a gun enthusiast, that should be one that you've got in the collection. Um, then I've got a 40 caliber Glock 23. That was the first handgun I was able to buy myself. Uh, so that's why I still have that one, but everything else is in nine millimeter. Nine millimeter is the one most commonly sold caliber across the United States. Now, when you're looking at your nine millimeter, there's some things to think about. There are different variations of your nine millimeter. What's mainly sold here in the US when people say nine millimeter is nine millimeter Parabellum. Okay, that is the actual name of it, all right? That was the name that it was given by the designer George Luger, who designed the Luger pistol. Okay, so sometimes you might see it labeled 9mm Luger. Same thing, they just different way to label it. So 9mm Parabellum or 9mm Luger, you're in the right category. You might even see it labeled 9x19. So if you go and measure and break everything down, that's what it comes out to, 9 by 19. You might even see it labeled 9 millimeter, 9mm, 9mm by 19. So there's different ways they're going to label it. Those are all the same thing. Those are all the correct 9mm caliber for the most of the 9mm sold in the United States. There are, again, there are other variations. You got your 9 by 18 Makarov, your 9x23 Steyr, your 9x21, uh, 9x18 Ultra, I think there's a 9mm Japanese. So there are other variations of the 9mm that will all be labeled when you go and buy ammunition. That'll be labeled out on the box. 9x18 Makarov, all that stuff will be labeled out there. So I just want you to understand there's different variations. Make sure when you're purchasing ammo, you're purchasing the correct ammunition. Because once you purchase it, most places are not going to let you return it. Sometimes you can find gun shows and talk to ammo dealers and they might trade with you. And there's also places like Gun Broker Arms List and other websites where you can go and sell guns and ammo. So there are ways to make your money back, but they're, just not, they're not gonna let you return it because they're worried about it being tampered with and that's kind of how everything came about. Somebody had tampered with ammo, returned it, just a whole big mess. So once you buy it, it's yours. Most places now you can go in and look and actually pick what you want. It's on the shelf for you to pick. Some place you go, they're gonna hand it to you. So make sure what they hand you is right because if they're busy, they might just see that nine or nine mm and not actually read the rest of it and give you the wrong thing. I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose, but depending on the gun store that you go to and where they're at, they can get very busy. So, but again, most of them are gonna let you go in. It's gonna be on the shelf, you pick it out. Nine millimeter Parabellum, nine millimeter Luger, nine by 19, nine millimeter by 19, all the same thing, they just label it differently. But now nine by 18 Makarov and all those others I've named off, those are different variations. And I say that because bad things could happen if you load the wrong ammunition into your gun. That's another reason I'm wanting to talk about this so everybody understands what you're looking at when you start to pick ammo and caliber and all that stuff. So now, moving on from there, you've got your different options as far as full metal jacket, um, lead round nose, or real quick, let me back up. I forgot to mention with revolvers. There are two calibers with revolvers that are interchangeable. Okay, and I apologize uh, for not getting this right away. It just dawned on me I need to talk about that. Your 357 and your 38 are interchangeable. But the thing is, I can only go backwards. I cannot go forwards. So what I mean is, is I can't take a 38 Special and put a 357 in it. I can take a 357 and put a 38 Special in it. I can't take a 38 plus P and put a 38 plus P plus in it. I can, the other way around, I can take a 38 plus P plus and put a 38 plus P in it or a 38 special in it. Or with the 357, I get all of them. 357, 38 plus P plus, 38 plus P, and 38 special. 
but those are the only ones that are interchangeable. All right. You've got 44 Magnum, you've got 38, 357. Those are your common ones when it comes to the revolver. There's other calibers in there as well. 45 Long Cold, um, 460, 500. Um, you got your 50. So, I mean, there's other variations out there, but those are some of those you're getting into large guns. So, this is kind of we're looking also at everyday carry as well, too. That's your different options with pistols, revolvers. Now back to what I was talking about as far as your different options with the bullet. Again, full metal jacket, lead round nose, semi wide cutter, hollow point, jacketed hollow point. Some of that's target ammunition. Some of that is what people call personal protection ammo. Some people call it self-defense ammo. Uh, one company calls it critical defense. Uh, so the hollow point jacket and hollow point is what I want if I'm going to go and actually carry in public. We're going to talk about that in a second. The full metal jacket, the lead round nose, the semi wad cutter, that's going to be more affordable because that's target ammunition. That's what I want for a target. Uh, most of the time you're going to find full metal jacket or lead round nose. Uh, the semi wad cutters, I really don't see too much of them anymore. Uh, and maybe I'm just looking in the wrong spot. But what those were, those were designed when police and law enforcement stuff were practicing, and not just them, I mean regular civilians as well too. But they're, essentially you don't have this rounded tip to it like a full metal jacket or a lead round nose. It's cut flat, looks like a small little shotgun shell. Those were used because they would put a perfect circle in the target because back in the day they didn't have shoot and see targets like what we have now. So it would be hard for them to see, and with those wide cutters, it would put a perfect circle in there, like taking a hole punch and punching in a piece of paper. That's essentially what it would do. Self-defense wise, you get somebody with a lot of mass, muscle and stuff, it might not penetrate deep enough to do damage. So unless you're really, really close, it might not do a lot of damage. It's gonna hurt, yes, it's gonna hurt, unless they're out of their mind on drugs or alcohol but it's not gonna do the damage you need it to do uh, to possibly get yourself out of a life or death situation. A uh, full metal jacket will, a lead round nose will get that job done. Now the reason I was saying hollow points or jacketed hollow points for carrying when you're going out in public, self-defense, things like that, is the reason a lot of us carry those is they, the hollow points, jacket hollow points are essentially hit the person and they mushroom or they break apart and slow the velocity down because depending on caliber, distance, clothing, body type, a full metal jacket or a lead round nose could go through to maybe even into a third person, maybe even a fourth person depending on how close you are in the caliber and again clothing and body type and stuff. Probably two, maybe three at most, but yes, these calibers or these bullets can go through people with full metal jacket lead round nose. Hollow points are essentially just like opening up a parachute. If you jump out of a plane you want a parachute. So what happens is, is it hits the threat and it starts to essentially like peel itself back and kind of mushroom to slow the velocity down so it doesn't go through them and possibly into another person. Jacketed hollow points are usually just kind of breaking apart. This is where also that confusion comes in when they start talking about the bullet explodes inside somebody. There is no bullet or no caliber out there that will explode inside somebody. That does not happen, people. It doesn't happen. Stop believing what you see in the news and politicians and media and all that stuff. Bullets do not explode inside people. It does not work that way. They do mushroom or break apart to slow the velocity down. They break apart. It's not like the jagged hollow point goes inside the person and then explodes. It does not do that. It doesn't. Okay? It doesn't. It doesn't. Even with a 50, it doesn't explode inside them. Now that's a large caliber, yes, it's going to do damage, okay? 
So, but your average pistol or revolver, or whatever, it's not going to explode. It's going to break apart so it doesn't go through that person and into another person. That's what those are there for. That's your hollow points, your jacketed hollow points. That's, again, what you want for self-defense. Now, they can be a little pricey. So what I mean is, is what you pay for 50 in target ammo, you might just pay for 20 in self-defense ammo. But they're going through a, the, the, the quality is way up there. I would say your target ammunition would be a Pinto and your self-defense ammunition would be a Ferrari. So they're gonna do the same thing, but one's just gonna get you there a little faster and look a little better doing it. Okay, that's, I guess, kind of a, I don't know, not the best analogy, but as far as quality, that's what you're looking at. They're doing the same thing, one's just a little better quality than the other. I mean, that's, that's the name of the game from hollow points to full metal jacket. So that's kind of what all that means. Um, I'll have some abbreviations. Um, down in the description. I might even have them pop up somewhere over in here uh, so you can see what they might be abbreviated. So it will say FMJ or Full Metal Jacket so you can understand what you're looking at there as well too. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the grain. You'll see now 115 grain, 147 grain, 124. Uh, when you start getting into something like your 223 and 556 five, you're looking at 55 grain and 62 grain and 45 you're looking at like 230 grain I think you're over 200 uh, so that what that means is is that's the weight of the bullet so this right here the little bullet that is what the grain means it's talking about the bullet what's going to get shot out of the gun that's the weight of the bullet it's not the weight of the whole round of ammunition. So bullet, round of ammunition, bullet, round of ammunition. Now look, I ain't gonna sit here and beat you up. If you walked up and said, hey man, I need some bullets, I'm gonna know what the heck you're talking about, but we wanna get technical, because some people can get a little technical in this industry. A round of ammunition is the bullet, the casing, the primer, and the powder. The bullet is its own thing that gets shot out of the gun. So grain is the weight of the bullet. So what that means is, is a heavier grain bullet is gonna hit harder. But now over distance, depending on where you're having to shoot from, a heavier grain bullet is gonna drop faster than a light grain bullet. But that's what your grain is. It's the weight of the bullet. It has no dictation on the recoil of your gun. The caliber it's what dictates the recoil of your gun. The weight of the bullet has no dictation to how your gun recoils. So don't get caught up in that. Um, I don't really care 115, 124, 147, whatever. So when it comes to target ammunition, I'm going with whatever is the most affordable. Sometimes it might be steel case, sometimes it might be brass. So what I mean, I'm talking about the the actual casing. It's a steel case. Okay, those are usually a little bit cheaper than what your brass casing is. So something else to consider. And I'll tell you when it comes to guns, some guns just don't like certain ammunition. Can't explain it, but you'll run into it. Some guns just don't like certain ammunition. It's just the name of the game. All right. So if you've never used the ammo before, I would maybe buy 50 rounds, see how it runs before you go and buy 500 rounds and then find out it ain't gonna work. Or you're having malfunctions every fifth, sixth round. So things like that happen. Don't be, don't think it's the gun or anything like that. It's just the name of the game, okay? But that's your grain, you got your bullets, you got your rounds of ammunition, all right, now what I'd like to talk about real quick is malfunctions that can happen with ammunition. I'm not talking about the gun, I'm talking about the ammunition. All right, your misfire. What your misfire is, is you're shooting, you're shooting, you're shooting, you're getting bang, 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 and then all of a sudden you just get click. 
So what happened is the firing pin struck the primer, but for whatever reason, the primer did not ignite the powder. Now, when you have this happen, don't just sit the gun down. Don't go looking down in the barrel like you've probably seen people do in other videos, because the reason I say that is that's where you run into your hang fire. Your hang fire is a malfunction resulting from the misfire. So it can be damaged. So I know it might be hard to see. I can hold these two up here right next to each other. See how this bullet here is deeper into the casing than what this one is. Because this one, and it came actually from the factory like that. It was in the box just like that. So another thing to think about, make sure you're inspecting your ammo as well too. Because things from the factory, that's factory brand new ammunition. It can come that way. It happens, it's a factory. Things like that happen in factories. But back to hang fire. Hang fire is bang, 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 bang. Misfire, hang fire. So bang, 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 click, bang. And you can go and look up any one of these that I talk about, uh, the misfire, the hang fire, and then also now you have a squib load, squib, S-Q-U-I-B, squib load. That could be something where it got underpowdered or yet again, damaged. So damage by the bullet is recessed down into the casing or maybe there's a crack or something in the bullet casing or there's a gap somewhere between the casing and the bullet where it can't get all of its power behind it. Again, if it's under powder, it's not getting all the power behind it. So what I mean is, it's not getting all the power behind it to get that bullet out of the gun. So with a squib load, you could run across a bullet lodged in your barrel. Now, with handguns, when I've seen them, it's rare that they're lodged in the barrel, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so if you've never experienced some of these, especially if you're new to shooting, go through YouTube here, type in misfire, type in hang fire, type in squib load. Somebody has probably caught it on video. Now, from that time from misfire to hang fire, you're looking at about three to five seconds on average. That was what I found digging into it when I found where pe people posted the time it took from the misfire to the hang fire. Now, some of those happen faster, half a second to three seconds. Some of them happen longer, five seconds to five minutes. Okay, that's this on average three to five seconds. So keep control over it. I'm not saying keep it pointed downrange in your shooting position. If you want to drop it back here, kind of like what we call a low ready, just main thing, keep control, keep it pointed downrange, count to five. If it hasn't gone off, Drop the mag, open the cylinder, whatever the fire might be, clear everything out of it. All right, don't go sit that round back in with other ammunition. It could still go off. It's very rare that that happens, but that could still happen. The main thing is keep control, don't just sit it down after it happens. Now, again, if you get out shooting and you've never experienced some of this, here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you're shooting and for a split second, a split second, you go, what the hell was that? Or somebody with you goes, what the hell was that? Even if it was probably maybe the shooter next to you, it's better to be safe than sorry. Clear the gun, break the gun down, check the ammo, check the gun. Don't end up having something blow up in your face and having a really, really bad day when all it would have taken is just a couple of seconds to check everything. So those are the malfunctions that you can have with ammunition. That's just some stuff I wanted to kind of talk about to help everybody understand about ammunition and calibers and things to can look at and consider when you're picking this stuff out because I get a lot of questions around this. Get what you want, carry what you want, but understand some's gonna be a little better than the other. If you're going out in public, carry hollow points. If you can't afford hollow points, something in your gun is better than nothing in your gun and no gun at all. Just understand your calibers, your distance, all that stuff when it comes to using it in a self-defense situation.
If you do have questions around ammunition that I did not answer in this, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be glad to help anybody out. Uh, message me, email me, whatever, and I'll be glad to help you out. If you're not really sure what caliber to pick, if you've got questions, whatever, let me know. I'll be glad to help you out. All right, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I hope everybody learned something. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.